Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and I'm here with David Bader. David is a professor at Georgia Tech. David, we're here to talk about the Adams Project from DARPA. What's that about? We're real excited about uh, this project at Georgia Tech to find insiders who may be on the road to going bad. So like a breaking bad, like people like inside a, a secure people, people that are working for these institutions that might be on the verge of of what, like becoming spies for the Russians? What kind of thing are we talking about? Well, well sure, Rich. We're looking for folks who are cleared, um, may work at a clear defense contractor or within the government, and over time are up to no good, are going down that slippery slope, and we hope to find them and get them help before something bad happens. So if this is going to be before an actual uh, digression would take place, how do you look for that? Very interesting question. So there are a couple of real world examples. For instance, the Fort Hood shooter back in 2009 who was uh, cleared and was radicalized over the period of years. Or the source, alleged source for WikiLeaks who took documents out of a classified network. Those are cases where we had clues and we aimed to look at those clues, put them together and try to find these, um, th these behaviors, these actions before something bad happens. So I would guess that, like in, in, in one of the cases you mentioned, that these events were logged in not even databases, but they're just, they're just uh, diverse events and no one connected the dots. Is, is that the mission of the Adams thing? That's right. So at Georgia Tech, we're really looking at big data problems and high-performance computing, and this is the ideal project. Every time someone logs into a computer, touches a file, sends an email, pieces of information get created, and we take those we collect them together and then we run large scale algorithms to try to understand anomalies. Those anomalies individually may overwhelm an analyst, but putting those pieces together, we may have unexplained events that raise the profile of certain individuals. So like, for instance, if I w typed a disgruntled email to my manager or something saying, uh, you know, this, this is whacked and would that be the kind of thing they're looking for? Uh, well, don't we all do that? <laughs> don't we all do that? Yeah. So in our system, we, we hope to take individual actions that are explainable, such as a disgruntled email. Those are, are not what lead to these serious threats. We may log that, but an analyst isn't going to look at that. What we want to find are the clues that are changes of behavior over long periods of time. And anomalous events that we can't explain, where individually they may be routine, but taken together with massive data sets, terabytes, petabytes, may lead to an, an investigation by an analyst. So is this a form of pattern recognition? What's the software actually doing? Very good question. So we are not doing traditional pattern recognition. Pattern recognition often leads to finding events that are not necessarily the ones that, that we're looking for. What we're doing instead is designing new algorithms using graph analysis and using machine learning approaches to try to explain unanswered, unexplainable events. And once we have explanations, that lowers the, um, the threat level for those actions. Okay, so for these cleared personnel, I remember when we first talked about this some months ago, They've volunteered to be monitored, have they not? Isn't that how, this is Big Brother spying on Big Brother, it sounds like. Well, there, there's no spying that takes place. And in our system, we are looking at places, clear defense contractors, government agencies, the military on information networks, where everyone has explicitly agreed to be monitored. And our system only works in that environment where we can collect information where everyone is participating. So how big a problem is, why is this an HPC class problem? The amount of data that gets generated is on the order of terabytes per day. So anytime someone sits at their computer and they send an email, access a file, log in, plug in a USB key, a record gets created. And those get centralized within an organization. And we aim to look at those logs, those records, to try to understand unexplainable events. Those are the anomalies that if we can explain them, they low, lower the profile, but maybe over long periods of time, we're aiming to stitch together the information that um, may lead to some um, 
curiosity as to why that ind individual did what they did. Sure. So uh, uh, give me a scenario here, David. So it, I do some behaviors that flag me. What would happen then? At the end of the day, we don't have a computer that is identifying individuals. We have an analyst who today gets overwhelmed with tens of thousands of anomalous events per day, log entries, and there's no way they can look through that amount of information. What we hope to provide to the analyst is maybe five of the most serious threats. Those are individuals who um, are inside the organization where the analyst may have the time to go through those five each day and hopefully be able to explain the anomalies. Well, in terms of predictive analytics, I'm just placing myself in the personages of somebody who's maybe going to break bad. They might not even know themselves that they're going to turn. Is that the case? That, that's absolutely the case. So in, um, I mentioned Major Nidal Hassan, the Port Hood shooter. He was radicalized over a period of years, and individuals may not realize that they're going down this slippery slope. So we're looking at long periods of time. Maybe someone starts shifting their workday by five minutes a day until they're working at night instead of the day. Maybe someone changes what they eat in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Maybe they come in unexpectedly or unexplained at two in the morning. And those are the sorts of patterns that we may start to look for, or start to understand. That's a simple explanation. We're able to take all of this information, a big data problem with terabytes upon petabytes of information, and then high performance computing, which can sift through that information, run very complex algorithms from stream and graph analysis, and also from machine learning to understand the threats. So just reaching out here, uh, is there a commercial application for this, like from credit card companies or that kind of thing, that, uh, predictive analytics for this kind of anomaly? Sure. So here we may be looking at how to keep ourselves safe in environments, for instance, agencies where um, everyone holds a security clearance or within the military. But this may have uses towards the financial sector, looking for insider trading. Now, as I mentioned before, our system only works where everyone agrees to be monitored because we're looking at a very hard lone wolf type of problem. Let, let me explain further. Traditionally, security looks at intruders from the outside. However, in this project, we have the threats on the inside. And that's very different. Everyone who is inside has the keys to the castle, and they know the monitoring is taking place. So we have a very challenging problem. And at Georgia Tech, we like solving those challenging problems.